Welcome and thank you for watching. Uh, Andy Cummings here, Med City Builders, my first blog entry um, as far as uh, the video side of it. I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about some code changes that we're going to be seeing as of January 24th. Um, obviously, we're getting to the point where it's a little too close to make any radical changes and get houses started or even permits pulled prior to that. But if nothing else, it just gives you kind of an insight of what you're going to be up against this upcoming year. Um, the four main areas I would say we're going to see changes in first and foremost is right on um, the building code itself. There's changes. The energy code is the next one. And then lastly is fire sprinklers. Um, radon, I'm not going to spend much time on. There really hasn't been a ton of changes regarding radon. Uh, just more definition as far as how these systems are going to be uh, accepted. Uh, I just keep it simple, the two main systems, just sand in the subfloor or there's going to be uh, pea gravel in the subfloor. Um, outside of that, we can go another option, but it's going to require engineers. Um, the next area, the actual building code itself, uh, a couple areas within the building code that I'd say uh, are highlights of changes here. A uh, big one probably as far as window fall protection. Um, many of the homes that were built over the last several years had windows that were as close as a foot off the floor, six inches even off the floor. Um, what's happened now is that they consider those areas of, uh, of concern as people potentially even falling out. So any windows, if their backyard is, is any further away from the bottom of that window, is, is more than six feet off the ground, uh, we are going to require fall protection. What that means is uh, you have to have windows that are at least 36 inches off the floor inside your home. So a lo long story short, uh, um, goodbye are the days of having windows floor to ceiling if you want them operating. Um, obviously if we we want to keep them a fixed window we can still make those work. Uh, it doesn't become quite as much of an issue until you get into areas like master bedrooms. Obviously in master bedrooms people still like to have their windows as tall and big as they possibly can. Uh, one of the things that I think we'll probably see is people will go to more of a fixed style window and then maybe just as a side window maybe closer to their bedroom set or something like that they're gonna have to have an operating window that makes that bedroom egress, which basically just means that it's a legal bedroom. Um, I'd say another area on that, we're gonna probably see some code changes regarding the footings. It's not gonna be something that's a major cost item, but footings are going up as well as far as the PSI that's gonna be required in the concrete. It's going up about a thousand, uh, thousand pounds per square inch. Um, into the area of energy code, um, probably one of the bigger areas of change that we're going to see here. Uh, I'd say many more required docks are going to be on site uh, in the energy code. Uh, that's before permit. So I think people are just going to do a lot more planning ahead of time, making sure that they've got all the information filled out ahead of time uh, versus waiting till the house is some, you know, even potentially halfway through. Uh, window efficiencies have changed. We're going to start seeing window efficiencies get to a minimum of a 0.32 U factor. And that doesn't mean much to people, but I guess the bottom line I'd tell you is that the windows are just going to have to be more efficient. You know, uh, Insulation, uh, this is a biggie. One of the insulation uh, changes that we're seeing, you know, we're seeing it all the way through the home. We're seeing it on the sidewalls. Uh, the sidewalls of a house went from an R19, which is typical, to an R, R20, R21. Uh, it means either higher density insulation or it means different types of insulation. We can go with closed cell spray foams, we can go with open cell spray foams, but they do make fiberglass bats at R21. Ceiling insulation has gone from an R44 up to an R49. Uh, and again, like it might not mean much to people, but the bottom line there is just more and thicker insulation. Rim joists, uh, an area around the house, typically in areas that divide your main floor, your lower level, or potentially your Main, your, your main floor, I should say, in your lower level, and then potentially your main floor in your second story. Uh, but those rim joists now, uh, instead of being in the past anywhere from an R5 to an R10, kind of depending on how the home uh, was designed, uh, we've gone to an R20. They consider that well part of the thermal envelope of the home, so that's a major heat loss area of the house. Um, excuse me. <laughs> uh, Basement sidewalls is another large one that uh, we're seeing for changes. I guess if you're going to a basement sidewall in the past, I guess I've been a firm believer in doing R5 for the exteriors. Um, I do think that's minimal when it comes to insulation, but one of the things we've recommended to people is potentially even doing R5 below grade and then having something that prevents frost from diving in the sidewalls straight down. Uh, if you ever want to email me on that, I can kind of explain it. But I guess the bottom line here is that the, the system that the state of Minnesota wants to see us go to is they want to see us go to an R10. 
Uh, one of the things that we'll see for a problem potentially with R10 on the outside walls is how we have uh, still how we still maintain bearing points from our side walls coming down. Uh, we've got ideas at Med City and how we're going to handle that, but that is potential concern and how we're going to build houses just a little bit differently to compensate for this. Um, they are going to require um, an R5 insulation as well. Uh, typically, it's going to have to be something that's fireproof. I know there's products from Dow, like a Thermax, that they make that that it is a fire rated type product. Um, that is not required if we can pass some tests on the inside. They're going to do some blower door tests and those sorts of things to see how house, how tightly the house has been built. Um, areas over garages, uh, that's another spot that's changed in the energy code. They're going to try to make sure that they really define that a little bit better to make sure people are doing it the proper way. It's always been a point of concern to different inspectors that I've dealt with over the years on how they think the right way to handle these situation is. Um, in the energy code, we're still going to be dealing with this uh, uh, air duct leakage test, those sorts of things. Um, along those same lines, if you have any penetrations from your duct work to the exterior of the home, they're going to make sure that we have every duct in the house sealed. They're just really trying to make sure that all the ducts are built a little bit tighter nowadays. I'd say at the end of the day, we're going to see almost every house that's going to have to have some sort of duct work because it's, it's not impossible, but it gets very, very difficult to keep all of the ducts within, with, within the thermal envelope of the home. Um, we're going to start seeing much tighter restrictions on balancing as far as uh, the heating system. You're not going to have this large variance anymore of a certain type of an air exchanger being able to satisfy a certain type of a house. It's going to have to be very specific. We're going to have to have uh, as tight of tolerances within 10% probably of the total ventilation system. So again, that comes back to that area up front that I mentioned. You're going to have to be very, very detailed in, in the information that you provide up front to prove that you can take care of these things ahead of time. Um, probably lastly on that, we're going to see uh, what the changes I'd say in the energy code are going to be uh, energy efficient lights. 75% of the home's uh, light fixtures are going to have to be a high efficiency type lighting. Um, we're starting to get there anyways. I think a lot of people are just automatically doing that in houses, but obviously again, this is going to be something that does play a factor in the cost. Uh, lastly, I guess, I'm going to try to keep this a little brief, but as far as fire sprinklers go, I'll just give you the nuts and bolts. A fire sprinkler system is required in a home that's over 4,500 square feet as of now. Again, they haven't completely finalized this yet, but any home that's over 4,500 square feet is going to be required to have a fire sprinkler. Um, houses under 4,500 square feet, you, one, uh, one major thing that we have to keep in mind is that if it's an unfinished basement in a home, uh, those areas that are unfinished, unconditioned air spaces, they're concerned with fire travel from your unfinished basement to your main floor of the home. So they are going to be requiring us to either do a fire sprinkler system in basements that are unfinished, which is basically every home. Uh, and then I guess if we're not going to do a fire sprinkler system, there's other ways we can handle it. We can put sheetrock up on the ceilings. We can put sheetrock up on the sidewalls. Seems like a simple fix, but one of the biggest problems we'll probably see there uh, is going to be that we have uh, all of the mechanical systems are going to be in place still. We want to make sure that we're putting in the lighting, the, the heating, all of those things still behind the walls. So it almost gets to the point where we're basically finishing the basement of a house. So I guess in a summary, there's a lot of changes coming up. And I guess if, if you're wondering what this means to you, you know, we at Med City, we build probably 12, 15 houses a year. On average, our price range is about 450 to 500. I don't want that to discourage people. We build homes that are 280, 250 to 280 thousand dollars, all the way up to 1.5 million dollars uh, in the past. But I guess the thing to keep in mind that on a typical house that you'd see from our company at, at Med City Builders, if it was a 450 thousand dollar house last year, that house is probably going up and upwards of 10 thousand dollars this upcoming year, just based on the things that I just rattled through. So. Obviously, code changes can be good. They are going to be good. They're going to help a house's efficiency. One of the downsides we're going to see is cost. So thanks for joining today. Sorry about the long message. Uh, we'll try to keep them shorter in the future. But if you have any questions, as always, please feel free to call us. Contact us by email. Again, I'm Andy Cummings with Med City Builders. And uh, again, thanks for watching.